My name is Dennis Fro. If you've been involved in an accident, call me and I'll fight for you. I'm not an actor or a celebrity spokesperson. I'm a real trial lawyer and I'll appear before real judges and real juries on behalf of people with serious injuries. So when I say I'll fight for you, I mean it and I'll back it up. If you've been hurt in an automobile or 18-wheeler accident, contact me toll free at 866-529-2444. And I'll fight for your rights. This is a good dude, y'all. Come yeah. here, tell a story, man. Big time yeah. lawyer. I hear Texas man. He not tell a story, and y'all need to say. Well, ahead. my book, my books. I started writing these books in, in 2011, and they're Move called. A little bit, yeah. There we go. Rules to live by. How to maintain peace of mind and happiness in a in a conflicted world, and uh, you can get them on Amazon. And you can download them directly off Amazon and Kindle. Just look up Dennis Sperling, which is uh, my my name, Dennis Sperling, and uh, and type in Amazon. They'll come right up. If you want a hard copy, you can email me at SperlingDennis at gmail.com. If you want a copy of the books, and I'm telling you, I give you a lot of different scenarios. There's some child support stuff in here, but it's mostly a lot of different areas which I've had to deal with in my personal life. Those of you guys who have sons who have uh, you just met or sons who are separated from you, if you one of those young men, and I call myself the lost son, and I actually uh, wrote a lot of music, man. Come to find out, man, I'm related to B.B. King through my grandma. It was her cousin. Oh, that's like oh, my sister's cousin. So he from Mississippi know. too. Yeah, yeah. She, her name was Elmira King. He was B.B. King. They were cousins, and they all lived out in that area. You know, and so come to find out, man, you know, music is in my blood. So I end up doing seven albums, the Beans and Cornbread. They produce Slim Thug, Paul Wall. Okay. I got actually have a track with Paul Wall from back in the day. It's called Grown Man Stuff. But, you know, that's not something I want to go into. But yeah. the bottom line is that creativity allows me to be who I am. But the books, you can find them on Amazon. You can if you can just you can do the Kindle thing. They're very interesting. They're a, a, a wonderful read. You can probably read them in two or three days, but they're great for young men who have grown up who haven't had their fathers. It basically sh deals with everything that we as Black American men have had to deal with in the past forty years. checking you out i'm like damn this this, this man a real deal so yeah. yeah definitely man we we all gotta reach back you know what i'm saying and we, we right now like with kev we got donovan we got all mm -hmm. these different brothers yeah. but in a network you know what i'm saying everybody's using their talents to help each other get to the next level they def definitely love to bring you into the fold definitely uh, you guys are amazing all you guys I, I just love to hear my black brothers speaking their, their mind i just want to hear you all say what it is that you want to say and speak on your behalf, because for, you know, I know you're a little bit younger than I am, man, but hell, for, since the 1980s, all I've been hearing is black men get bashed, they ain't this, they ain't that. We had nobody to speak up on our behalf, you know? So we've been told just to shut up and take it, be the strong, silent type. It's not manly for you to speak up. How dare you argue with these women, blah, blah, blah. Even if what they're saying is outright lies and what we know not to be true, even in our religious, you know whether it's the um whether it's the church or the black muslims or any of these type of folks it's always seemed like they rather bash the men as opposed to hold the ladies accountable and that's unfortunate because you've created this one-sided war and you have one side that has no accountability for what they've done and then now what look at where we are as a culture Trade, uh, actually uh Brother DeBell, 5,000 got a, a question. Is there any way for family court laws to change if men and, and real women push push to change it? What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think the fact that you have more women being, uh, being forced to pay child support and alimony is probably the only thing that's going to make them say, we need to change these laws. Because as long as it was one-sided and it was men paying women uh, for the past, I don't know how many years, at least since the 90s, 
a lot of, a years, lot of years, a lot of years. Then there was no incentive for women to even want to change anything because that's their fallback plan. I marry a rich guy, I have some kids, I divorce them, I'm good. But right, right. <laughs> but now that <laughs> women are, are being forced to have to ante up, I think there there is some incentive for it to change. And here's another thing: a lot of those ladies who have sons who they've seen been manhandled by the child support system, they should they, they should become advocates for uh, family law reform. I think one thing we should do is we should begin to do away with child support altogether. Like they use black men as a catalyst to get more funding for themselves to go in a different direction. What are your thoughts on Black Lives Matter as an organization? I am not happy with Black Lives Matter as an organization. In fact, I'm absolutely disgusted by Black Lives Matter as an organization. These vultures, what they do is Whenever a black man is shot by a white cop or a white race soldier or one of these white suburban commandos, they come in to protest and they only come in to protest if those black men's lives fit a certain narrative. So Black Lives Matter is a very disingenuous organization. It talks about marching and protesting, but if we look at who they're marching and protesting for, oftentimes it is again, black men who are Pookies and Ray Rays who are shot and killed by a white police officer, a race soldier, or one of these white suburban commandos. They go out here, they kick up a fuss with this protesting, and they really are not anything about black men or black men's issues. Because when I look at Black Lives Matter, they don't talk about black men's issues. After a car wreck, you may have to fight with a highly trained insurance company rep whose job is to knock your damaged claim down and out. It's a bad idea to enter the ring alone against a trained boxer, and it could be a bad idea to fight against a big insurance company by yourself. When the bell rings, attorney Dennis Sperling will be there to fight for your rights. If you've been seriously injured in a car wreck, call me, attorney Dennis Sperling, at 866-529-2444. That's 866-529-2444. What's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Attorney, reality, uh, reality show creator and rapper Dennis Sperling. Also joining us is Sperling's good friends, Vondrick Christmas and Dion Dorsett. Welcome to the Fact Uncensored. What's up, Thank Now, here's Thank the you. thing. I've been reading your Facebook posts for uh -huh. years. Okay. And this is what you've been espousing. You're saying, I need to leave this country to find a good woman. Yeah. Okay. See, first of all, first of all <laughs> no backtracking. Really like no backtracking. Like that, man. <laughs> we don't need to smoke, man. We don't need that type of smoke. Okay. I. What happened was I got divorced, uh -huh. and I looked around and I said, you know, I, I want to change. You know, and I never really traveled. I went to school. These guys went to school with me, and they know all we did was study. And so I got married. That didn't work out. I got divorced, and then I said, well, you know what? Let me get a passport and see what that's like. So I started traveling overseas. I went to the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, uh, all over London, Europe, things that I had never done before. And I liked it. And I liked what I saw. And I enjoyed myself. And when I did decide to date, I got treated like a king. So I go where I'm celebrated. Uh -huh. You know, and that's so basically it. You're, you're not <laughs> celebrated here in the United States. 
what, like you want to be. Okay, <laughs> see, what had happened was <laughs> I got divorced, you know, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. My Facebook posts are real, but really they're the, they're the, they're the feelings that a lot of African-American men and men in general feel. They say, look, the juice is not worth the squeeze. Mm -hmm. I work all my life. I do everything I can to please my wife, and then she divorces me. 70% mm -hmm. of marriages are, are brought to divorce by the women in those relationships. So clearly people aren't happy. Look at the marriage rate. Look at the depression rate that we have. I think people need to get out a little bit more. But more importantly, uh, you know, it, it's something that I like. These guys, I know that they're, they don't feel the same way I do because my Facebook page has a diverse group of guys mm -hmm. with different ideas. Mm -hmm. And so this is just what works for me, okay. you know? And, and so what uh, works for you guys? So uh, <laughs> I would say that... Uh, and which, and then it depends on what type and of... And is anything are. wrong with that? Not requiring it's, it's, more. No, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with that at all. <clears> it's, <throat> it's just, you know, those expectations seem for uh, some guys maybe a little bit much. Mm -hmm. I know? argue all day, and I don't have time to come home and argue. And so that's what you get yeah. with I, I don't, I what don't, you yeah. perceive to be an American woman. I, I, I think that American women, they have so much pressure on them that it's nearly impossible for them to fulfill those traditional roles that women have fulfilled all the way up until the 50s mm -hmm. when industrialization and it was it's impossible for them to do that. So it, the culture and what we have going on here in the United States makes it impossible to have one of those traditional relationships, whereas in Colombia or the Dominican Republic or Haiti, the women, they still have that culture that says, hey, I'm cooking and cleaning for my man. But hey, there's some responsibilities on the men, too, mm -hmm. because those women, they still want men mm -hmm. that take care of business, mm -hmm. that go to work, that pay bills. So you have some so you have a role you have to fill and she has a role she has to fill. So it's not like I'm just going down there sitting up on the sofa and she's making mango every day, feeding me like I'm a king. <laughs>
it's I'm glad that we actually got a high value man. Shout out to Kevin Kevin Samuels. I'm not sure if you're yeah. following the high value movement, but you know, what I'm saying you definitely would, would fit that description. I mean, a lawyer. You know, what I'm saying you, you you went about it the right way. You're married. Unfortunately, the marriage didn't work out, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And what you have to do is co-parent. And we hear the women all the time tell us stories about how I'm such a guy. We co-parent good. It's always the women talking about it. You know right. what I'm saying? But you as a black man, high value black man, it's, it's very important that you get a perspective and give the brothers the right advice as far as co-parenting. And it seems like that's been the the, the bulk of your work. You know what I'm saying? Outside of the, the, uh, the law. You know, you've been you've been really pushing um, uh, for co-parenting and just showing the dynamics of it and how it should work and how it can work in harmony. Because again, you don't have no ill will against your wife. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm say not it. saying it on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you ain't cooking her. So I mean, it seems like everything. You know, you, yeah. you, you got you got everything coping steady. So talk to the brothers uh, who who may be going through a divorce. Well, who, who may be in a situation where, look, man, I had a kid with this woman and I got all these things going, but I'm trying to make sure I keep harmony for the sake of the kids, because that's who it's about. Well, let me say this, brother. Uh, I got divorced for a reason. Okay. And I, uh, in, in the wake of that divorce, five years thereafter, I got myself what's called a baby mama. I don't know if you've heard of that, but life got real we heard of that. Have we heard of that church? <laughs> yeah, it, it got complicated after that happened because the children were born under two separate circumstances. So I can pull from both of these, you know, to kind of explain, you know, what happened. Now, I would suggest that okay. you never get a baby mama if you can avoid one, but it happened to me. But uh, basically what I'm, I think my point is you can't co-parent with everyone, period. If you, if you weren't married to that woman, if you were married to a woman, Hopefully you guys came to an accord at some point and you can use that as a foundation to begin to co-parent and do what's in the best interest of the child. Now, if you had one night when you turned up at the club and you just randomly met some woman and you have nothing in common with her and you don't know much about her and you guys have two different set of principles and understanding about how life should be and how children should raise, it's going to be very difficult for you to co-parent with that person. So, so is that the case with the baby mama? Probably so. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dennis Berlin. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you've been hurt in a car accident, then call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know, yeah. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy return in Dennis Sperling. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me, 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Understanding about life. Uh, I know what it is to What's up, y'all? This is Dennis Sprill and also known as Uncle D, and I'm back at you guys with a very controversial topic, apparently. Even before I got started, I got 
the brothers in here. Uh, Black Pill Revolution says, do not get the med, do not get the marriage license. You're signing a contract. Uh, Pan African Ado said, must consider wild card California family courts. Law marches by the beat of, the diff of different drums when they talk of far left feminist views. They refer to far west California's. Uh, let me see. Tyler Thoreau said, like your other information, but quit promoting marriage. You and Kevin Samuels are just leading men down the road of wifing reform <laughs> 304s. All your all your other information is solid, but marriage no go. Bro, why is that, bro? If all my other information is solid, why wouldn't you think I'm giving you solid information coming down? And it's all coming from the same source. My brother Malika Mbane says, peace to the family. Uh, who else we got? Rich, Cliff. We're all prepped like cattle. Or cattle. Going into slaughter, which is marriage. Since the day we were born, it is our fate to marry the leftover women and provide for them until the day she wants to divorce us. Uh Oh, man, George says, uh, George is trying to get his papers. George, I can't help you, man. I'm not an immigration lawyer. Uh, let me see. Pan-African Ados. Yes, at Rich Cliff. No more cleanup, man, for, for black men going their own way. Uh, okay, so here's the thing, fellas. Today we're going to talk about you want to get married, but you don't want to get robbed and divorced. Okay, that's who this message is for, those who want to get married. Men who, who want to have children, men who want to have children and have a legacy, that's for them. That's the reason you should get married. If you want to have children, if you want company, get a dog. Uh, if you need attention, buy a cat. But for men who want to have children and want to have a legacy, we don't need to have any more out of wedlock children, no more bastard babies. That's what I'm saying, right? You should have children inside. If you're going to have children, you should be married. Make them legitimate, give them your last name, blah, 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 blah. Now, you shouldn't be penalized, right, for trying to do the right thing. You shouldn't be. Because marriage is the, marriage is the best place to raise children inside a, 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 a marriage. That's the best place to raise children. If you don't want to have children, don't get married. That's what I'm saying. And here's another thing. All you guys who say, uh, yeah. I'm going to have a surrogate have my child. You know how hard it is to be a single parent, to be a single father. You got to work. You got to pick these kids up from school. You have no help, no one to drop that kid off with. And you don't know how you're going to change over the years. So now you got a kid, uh, a surrogate parent. You need help with that. That child is going to need that female balance. They're going to need their mom. And that child may grow up to resent you if you have that child with a surrogate mom. We don't know. That's uncharted land. So trust me, the best place to have children is inside a marriage. OK, I'm not talking about if you're married and you adopt a child. I'm talking about you guys are straight up. You're the surrogate mom. Then you got a kid who doesn't know who the mother is. It's just, you know, man, that's uncharted territory. All right. The only thing really deterring men from getting married is the financial penalty associated with the divorce. And the fact that 80% of the divorces in the black community are initiated by these lovely ladies, it, it makes me have to warn you that before you get married, you should consider it a binding uh, contractual relationship. In other words, marriage is a business. And as long as you look at it solely for the purpose of this is a love relationship, you're going to go into it with, with blinders on and you're going to make mistakes. Modern marriage is a business. Just like any business, you're taking on a financial risk. The goal then is to minimize the financial risk through prenuptial agreements, postnuptial agreements, irrevocable trust, corporate holding companies, and by utilizing readily available financial tools to minimize the financial incentive associated with divorce. A lot of these ladies wouldn't get a divorce if they knew they were going to go back to the their financial situation they were in before. But if they can take you to court, get your money and then all also neutralize, you know, any, <laughs> any of your ability to bounce back to boot. Oh my God. What a wonderful thing, right? They get to take your money and spite you too, especially if you're the ex-husband. They definitely don't want to see you do better. Right. Most of them. Don't. So, you know, you, what you have to do fellas is you have to anticipate 
that 50% of these marriages are going to fail. And if it's a 50-50 bet, then what you got to do is anticipate what your opponent is going to do after the divorce documents are filed. And then what? And then anticipate that ahead of time. It's just like, you know, every play that your opponent is going to run in a basketball game or a football game, you're going to come up with a defense for that. Are you going to make sure that that opportunity is not there? So what are you, what's going to happen when you get a divorce? Well, most likely you're going to get served with some papers, but before that there's going to be a buildup. Sometimes what women will do is they'll pick fights with you in order to call the police on to have you removed from the house so they can build a record. They can build a record and say, even if it's just a domestic standby call, I'm not talking about full blown blown DV accusation, but a domestic we're arguing. I want the police to come out just so we can have them stand by that way. they begin to build a record. And if there happens to be any sort of DV involved then guess what then, then they're going to file a record, have you arrested. And what does that do? That creates a, a record of domestic violence. And what does that allow? That allows for them to get a uh, temporary restraining order, removing you from the house. So now you're out the house, right? And they have custody of, they have possession of the house. So that then the judge is going to say, well, she's been in possession of the house for six months. But judge, she's been in possession of the house for six months because I was told to get out because of a DV. Oh, well, she has possession. And like that old saying goes, possession is nine tenths of the law. Now, what if that house doesn't belong to you or it doesn't belong to her? What if that house belongs to a trust? What if that house belongs to a corporation that's in your name that you formed before uh, you even got married. What if you opened a mortgage on that house and put that trust, put that home in your house, in, in your name? Because see, there's a mortgage and then there's the deed. The deed can be in the name of who? The corporation. The deed can be in the name of who? The trust. An irrevocable trust at that. The mortgage might be in your name. But the deed is in somebody else's name. It's no different than when you're paying. Well, it's a little different, but it's like when you're paying rent. So that's one thing we can do. Another thing we can do is what? Prenuptial agreements. And I know people uh, prenuptial agreements aren't worth a good prenuptial agreement based on the laws in the state where you live. It, it helps. Every little bit helps. Here's another one that you guys aren't being told. The public. Offshore, tr offshore trust accounts. Offshore trust accounts are outside the subpoena power, outside the jurisdiction of the typical state court. So you got a you got a bank account in the Cayman Islands, and you got a trust account there. You got a trust account in I don't know England, Switzerland, depending on where you are. It's, it, you live in the United States or somewhere. There's nothing a judge in Colorado, New York, L.A., California can do anything about that. You're going to send a subpoena, what are they going to say? Absolutely nothing. So what you're doing is you're removing all the financial, uh, you're removing the financial aspects out of the, the benefits out of getting a divorce. And this is the goal here. And, and so if a person knows I'm not going to get anything but maybe child support, if I divorce this person, then maybe I need to sit tight. Now, here's another thing. Many states like the Many states have caps on child support and there are other states that don't have uh, um, um, alimony. There are some states that only give alimony in very limited circumstances. So you need to do your research before you even get married. Look at the you need to get a consultation for divorce before you even get married. Spend the five hundred dollars. Talk to them. Let them know where you're coming from. Talk to talk to talk to your attorney. Understand what's happening. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to go bit by bit and we're going to talk about this. All right. Now, um, if you guys appreciate what I'm doing here, go ahead and contribute to the super chat, contribute to the cash app. This is probably a conversation that can save you guys life and a lot of uh, headaches in the future. OK, um, I want you guys to show me your appreciation for what I'm doing by contributing to the super chat. In addition to that, like, subscribe and share. All right. Now, I'm not against marriage, but what I am against is, is men getting robbed in divorce court. Men who've worked their whole lives and having their, their fortunes uh, uh, pillaged 
by opportunistic women who use the system to uh, to benefit themselves unfairly. That's what I'm against. That doesn't mean that I have a, a problem with women getting some money as a you know dedicated wife. If the man decides to file a divorce or things happen. There's some some bad stuff going on in the relationship. I have no problem with the woman getting. Uh, uh, you know, a portion of the proceeds. Both the Bible and the Quran say the same thing as far as that. What I do have a problem with is a woman or any mate, uh, man or woman, you know, coming in after this per person is already on an upwardly mobile trajectory, coming in, getting half the money, taking that money away from that man's children or taking that money away from, let's say he has previous children, taking that money away from his previous children and using it off for her own. There are situations where guys have spent their whole lives paying for houses and then the woman gets a divorce. And then the next thing you know, she's moved her new boyfriend and he's living in the house with the woman and the, the ex-husband's kids and he's still paying the bills in the house. That's not fair. That's not right. And those are the sort of things I want to avoid. Okay. And I want you guys to recognize, again, I'm not against marriage. I'm just against the financial incentive associated with getting divorced. Now, I've told you guys this before, and I'm going to keep telling you this. You don't need to even think about getting in a serious relationship. And a serious relationship, by my definition, is one that is leading towards marriage until after you are 35 years old. You don't even need to think about getting married until you're in your late 30s, which is uh, 39. For, uh, uh, 38, 39, 37, 38, 39, I guess, or early 40s, 41, 42, 43. You see what I mean? This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. By that time, fellas, you should have established yourself. You should have some financial possessions. You should have some things. You should be able to see. You should have a track record of maybe over 20 years of earning. So you know what you're capable of. You know what you're worth. You know what your future earnings are. And at that point, you should reach back and get a young, if you want to have children, right? Right? Get you a young woman who it can who can give you healthy children, who is beautiful, somebody you can deal with, somebody you can teach, somebody you can enjoy being with, somebody you consider being worth it, okay? Because not every woman is worth your time. Not all of them are good enough for you, especially if you spent your time building yourself up. And then what you should also do is establish with that woman. First week, first date, first conversation that before when she starts talking about marriage, say, I'm not getting married unless I have a prenuptial agreement and other uh, financial incentives or mechanisms set in place to protect my wealth. If she can't understand that, then you got to go. She, she's not a candidate. She is not in no way someone you want to deal with. If she gives you even a, a hint of, uh, of, of refusal or pushback from you saying, I need a prenuptial agreement, uh, maybe you mentioned trust, whatever you mentioned, and you have to explain to her, I'm removing the financial incentive out of divorce because I want to stay married. Any woman who is entering into a marriage for the right reasons will say, well, damn, I have to agree with that. You're removing the financial incentive out of divorce because at this point, there's financial incentive involved in a divorce, period. So before we go any further, uh, thank you, Mr. Dartavian. Rise up. He said, thanks, bro, for the great information. Uh, my man, Magic42 said, what are the best states for a man to marry in? It's not about the best state for a man to marry in. It's about the best state to file your divorce in. You see, and you have to look around for that. You know, you have to look around. I'm going to be honest with you. Some of your more Republican states, Texas, Alabama, uh, Mississippi, those states are much friendlier to men when it comes to divorce, especially wealthy men, than your Californias and your New Yorks. I would tend to stay away from any state where liberals and Democrats run the state because you could just they're pretty much female oriented they're going to look out for the women they're going to look out for 
Because, see, in those states, women benefit from those social programs. And so they want to make sure that if there's a man who can pay, then that there's no possibility that that woman will have to need one of those social programs. So they'll hit the man in the, in the pocket. In California, for instance, there is lifetime alimony. So that $2 million a month that Dr. Dre is paying his wife, he's probably going to have to pay that $2 million a month to that woman for the rest of her life. So that's $24 million a month he's got to pay that woman who was married to him for only 20 years. If she's 40-something, maybe, she could live for another 40 years. So for that 20 years, she's getting a $2 million uh, pension every month. Two million a month, man. California is, they will rob you in California, man. Golly, don't, I wouldn't even want, I, if you were, if I were, I wouldn't even date anybody in California. I wouldn't even, I don't even want to visit California. Don't get married in California. Because see, all that's going to happen is the woman could then run back and say, well, this is a state we got married in. So I want to make sure I get a divorce here, right? That state will have jurisdiction. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Do your research ahead of time. Consult with a lawyer, but it's not the state that you get married in. For for the most part, it is to some degree. But like I said, California, it's the state where the divorce is filed first. Okay, so think about that. That's the underlying. Now, a lot of people will talk about prenuptial agreements, but a lot of people won't talk to you about trust. Okay, a trust is simply the name of a holding account, we'll call it. It could be a bank account. It could be... A, 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 a corporation uh, it could be a bank. Like for instance, your house can your house can be held in trust by uh, City One or Bank of America, and they they could have a irrevocable trust. You could have a, a, a bank account associated with that trust. Let's say, for instance, you hit the lottery before you get married. You win a uh, ten million dollars, right? And now you're getting married. And you don't want to, and before I get any further, never have any joint accounts, but I'll deal with that a little bit later on. But let's say back to this $10 million lottery scenario, you want to put your money in trust in an irrevocable trust and receive the interest on that money every month, whatever. You can do that. You can make yourself the beneficiary. Now, I don't do estate planning, but there are plenty of estate planning guys out there. There are plenty of lawyers out there who do estate planning. You want to set up a trust. Let's say you got inherited property. If you got inherited property that you got from your mom or your dad when they passed away. You got a house, you got a ranch, you have some valuable art, you got a comic book collection, right? You want to put that in the name of the trust. You want to also document that, that as separate property because anything owned during the marriage in most states and community property states is presumed to be community property. So you got to fight about it. So what you want to do, fellas, is you want to eliminate as much stuff as there is to fight about. There are people who fight about who gets the sofa, who gets the TV, hell with the cars and the house, who gets the sofa, who gets the TV. So what you do is you eliminate all that. You get, you eliminate, there ain't nothing to fight about. How long is this divorce going to last? The, if, the house is, if the house belongs to an irre irrevocable trust, the art collection belongs to an irre irrevocable trust, your pension belongs to, uh, you know, you, 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 you set up your pension so that the minute you start getting after you got married, that, that all that money that beforehand at that point belongs to you and it's separate property and anything after that. Yeah. It may, may be subject to the community property regime, but what you do is you can also work to have that, that other money deposited in a different account. So you keep it separate. Now, there are some states that will allow you to uh, totally opt out of the community property regime with a prenuptial agreement and amended postnuptial agreements afterwards. But you want to make sure that you, you, you always and vigilantly constantly remove the financial incentive out of a divorce. Now, here's the thing. Uh, a trust, there's also trust that you can have in the United States, and then there's also trust that you can have offshore. If there is a divorce, opposing counsel is going to challenge the validity of a prenuptial agreement. You guys have heard about that. They're going to say stuff like, uh, it's unconscionable. Uh, he married this woman from Colombia. She couldn't even speak English. 
This was 10 years ago. She didn't know what she was signing. The titles are nothing. She'll go to the poorhouse, all this stuff. And so the judge may look at that. Now your life is dependent on what a judge thinks. So that's why prenuptial agreements, that's why people say that they're not ironclad. A trust, especially an offshore trust where the trustee is outside the jurisdiction of your local courts, is very difficult to challenge. Because why? Because you can say, well, that's a trust account. And there's nothing the court can do about it. You can't make a trust. You can't make a trustee who is based out of uh, Great Britain do what a court down in Oklahoma says do. You can try to command the person. But if he says, well, it's an irrevocable trust, I have no authority over it. It's an irrevocable trust, nothing I can do. In fact, we have never seen, you know, it, it, it hadn't been done before. I mean, I'm sure it's been challenged, but it hadn't been done. So. Here's the thing. Um, I understand this is probably not a romantic relationship conversation, but divorce is not about romance. Yeah, you should. That's how you looked up, whatever. But if you just want to be in love with the person, there's no need to put any paperwork between. you. If you want to establish uh, a relationship with children, then you should get married because you don't want to raise children outside of the divorce and uh, outside of the marriage because this creates a problem for children. I think we know this. We, we know single mothers and single parentage is, is just a problem. It, it, it just, it, it's, it's created a problem here in the United States. So you want to consider uh, getting married if you're going to have children. Um, a prenuptial agreement is a contract between two people. It, it creates a, that you create before entering into the marriage. Most often these agreements Focus on outlining the terms associated with dividing up financial assets. Uh, and, and they do this uh, responsibilities at the end of the marriage. Couples decide to get a prenuptial agreement or prenup for a variety of reasons. Professionals such as an organization often create such trust to protect property or as a part of a larger estate plan. So, But you can still use that, right? You can still use a trust account you know, to help you protect against a marriage. And trust accounts are also good against other judgments because divorce is a judgment, right? But let's say you get in a car accident and you get this house, right? You got this $2 million house, right? And somebody, heaven forbid, your, you know, underage child hits somebody and causes them to die. Now you got a $10 million judgment against you because you are the parent of that child and you unlawfully entrusted your child to that. So now you're part of parcel responsible for that. And yeah, they say, well, you can file for bankruptcy, but they're going to make you sell your house and try to pay off all your debts. So by putting your home in a trust account, what does that do? It protects those assets. J.D. Rockefeller said, the best way to stay re rich is own nothing and control everything. You still maintain control over the property. You can live in it, you can do what you want to do with it. You can't encumber it unless you, you can't sell it or encumber it unless you get approval from the trustee. But what it does is what? It protects you from lawsuits. So trust accounts are also good, not just for divorce judgment, but also other money judgment. Setting up a trust before marriage can be one of the keys to keeping assets separate from your partner. There are several benefits to putting your, there are several benefits um, uh, to putting your high value assets into a trust. As an article for, for, uh, for Forbes explained, uh, when an, ex oops, let me, what the snap hell is going on here? One minute. I am Give me one minute, you guys. I seem to be have some technical difficulties here. Let me start this thing out for you guys in one minute. All right, there we go. I'm sorry, apologize for that, guys. Yeah, I had a little technical difficulty for a minute. I'm back. So um, where was I? Uh, okay, so the law usually considers that any assets uh, placed in, in a trust a separate property as long as you create it before the marriage. This is especially important for business owners or if you own real estate. 
putting property in trust gives ownership of the property to the trust instead of you. So you, so a future ex-spouse has no claim on that property. So you get divorced. Your wife says, well, I want the house. You say, well, the house belongs to this trust. It belongs to the Spur, the, 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 the Sperling family trust. And uh, there's nothing I can do about it. That's one less thing to fight about. Well, what about the cars? Well, the cars belong to the Sperling family trust. Nothing I can do about it. Why is that? Because I use the Sperling family trust money, which is separate property, to purchase these cars. And as part of that agreement, those cars belong to the house. I mean, those cars belong to the trust. And when they are sold, proceeds from those cars go back to that. Nothing else to fight about. What can we do about it? There's nothing to fight about. So the house and the cars are meeting the what about the furniture? Well, the furniture was used to, was purchased through the Sperling family proceeds from the Sperling family trust. And the trustee is the person who, uh, who determines, uh, you know, uh, what happens to that. It's not mine. Right. You see what you just did? There's no perfect, there's no one remedy for everything. But what you're doing is you're eliminating all the reasons to fight. There's nothing for them to fight about. So a lawyer is going to look at it and say, well, damn, you ain't got nothing to fight about. Right. Or you, you're still going to have your future income and your alimony. But let's say you, you get a divorce in a state where alimony is not allowed. Oh, well, there's no alimony. There are states like that. There are plenty of states where, you know, well, there's enough states where enough alimony is not allowed. You, you just don't get it. Ashira Neal said, what are, what are your thoughts on the dowry or pre-settlement before marriage outlining benefits? Will this hold up in court? Basically, Asher, what you're talking about is a prenuptial agreement. And that can go either way. You know, it depends. And I don't know what state you're in, but for the most part, they try to take into account um, whether or not it's conscionable or the circumstances was written. It's any other contract. Was it rest? Did the person know what the, For instance, let's say you made a, you, you marry a woman who's from Eritrea. She doesn't speak English. And you get her to sign a contract that's written in Spanish or English, and she doesn't speak English, I should say. Uh, the judge is going to say, well, did she have a lawyer? No, she didn't have a lawyer. I just had her sign it. Or, uh, no, uh, she was, she, we were going to get married the next day and I needed her to sign this. Well, she signed that under duress. Or she signed it while being uninformed. And so that contract, like any other contract, is going to be tested by, by a court. That's why you get the lady to sign that contract well before you even think about getting married. Matter of fact, as I said before, that should be one of your first Con that should be one of your first conversations because if she's not willing to sign a prenuptial agreement and, and, and do those other things, then you can already tell where she's coming from. And that's not a woman you want to marry because she's contemplating a divorce before she even gets married. You see, you tell her this, I want a prenuptial agreement. I want to get these other things in place because I don't want to get divorced. Do you want to stay with me forever or not? If you stay with me forever, none of this matters. If you don't, then you won't get anything. You remove the financial incentive out of getting divorced. You, re you remove it. Um, my man, Mr. Bean, said if a man separated from his wife, no paperwork filed in court, and he buy a home and, his, and is his wife required to, to that property, technically, Mr. Bean, in most states, if you're married, right, if you're legally married, you got a contract of marriage, uh, when you purchase a house, that's community property, whether she signs off on it or not. Because at the point where you guys get a divorce, the judge is going to say, what, what assets do you have? And you got to list all your assets. And that house is probably going to be one of those assets that you list. Unless you don't, then they can find out about it. And then that's fraud. And the judge might punish you for that if they find out, which they probably will. Because all they got to do is pull your credit report and see what loans you have. Out. So that's not that hard. I trust expensive to set up. Carlos. V Valletta B uh, Viette says, I trust expensive. It's not going to be as expensive as a divorce. You see what I'm saying? You got to, you got to, again, you removing all the financial incentives out of divorce. That's all I'm asking. That's how we're going to keep it. The way you keep marriages intact is you don't get a divorce. The way you keep people from getting divorced is remove all the incentives out of getting a divorce. Do you think these lovely ladies of all colors will get a divorce? If they knew they were going to be left broke, they were going to get a very little minimal child support and they were going to have to go back and live with their relatives in poverty. Probably not. It's probably a lot of stuff they'd overlook. That'd be different if this woman makes more money.
that's the case, well, then hell, you better try to hold on. But if it's a situation where she has it, there's an incentive for her to get a divorce. Hell, you leaving your underwear in the middle of the goddamn floor too many times is grounds for her to get a divorce in a no fault divorce scheme. So what you want to do is you want to eliminate all the financial incentives out of getting a divorce. Because I promise you that is the primary driving force behind divorce. There's money to be made in this thing. It's a lot of it. She can take her cash and prizes and uh, she can go about her business. You see what I mean? That's how that works. Tyrone Washington said, how do men avoid getting robbed in child support court if the woman doesn't receive alimony? How do you avoid her gaining financial benefits through the children? So here's the thing, Tyrone. It depends on what state you live in. Now, the thing about child support that we we, we're not um, we're not uh, avoiding the subject, but you have to understand the child support uh, states. Hold on, hold on one minute. Give me one minute. You have to understand the scheme of child support set up. Um, in your state, okay, you have to understand. For instance, Texas has a cap twenty five hundred dollars a month, no matter what, whether you're a millionaire or whatever. No woman can get more than twenty five hundred. Nobody can get more than twenty five hundred dollars a month for each kid. Usually, it's limited to about twenty percent, twenty five percent. I think it's twenty five percent in most states. And I'm not giving you guys any legal advice. I'm just kind of generally talking to you about the scheme. Uh, but there's a list, uh, the states with the highest child support payments, Massachusetts, Nevada, <laughs> states with the lowest child su support states, R the Rock Rocky Mountain states, that'd be like Montana or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So you can kind of, you can kind of Google it. You can kind of take a look and see what, what's going on in your state, but that's not some, you, it depends on the regime. You can't prenup away from uh, from child support. That's not something you can predetermine. But what you should push for um, in any in any child support proceeding, any any divorce proceeding is is 50 50 custody and limited child support. Now, will your ex agree to that? I don't know. You know, you may have to give, you may have to take. But remember, uh, that child is going to need both parents. All right. So you don't want to just repeat what's been going on here in this country for the past 40 or 50 years, just giving the children to the mom and the dad sees them on the weekend. That that's a stupid idea. We can see that the children need to be with their mom, too. But 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 for the most part, you can't. It's, it's, you got to look at the state in the state of Texas is twenty five hundred dollar cap. And here in the state of Texas, they don't give out on only on the rare circumstances. Do you get out on the other states like that? Um, but, and, and I'm doing some Googling right now to see, uh, no, Texas is one of them states with no lifetime alimony states, with no permanent alimony. Just Google. You can kind of check it out. Um, let me see. Are there states with no alimony? North Carolina and Georgia limit alimony due to marital uh, misconduct, abandonment, or adultery. Most states do not recognize no-fault divorce factors when awarding alimony. Uh, what states have permanent alimony? That's going to be New Jersey, Connecticut, Vermont, North Carolina, West Virginia, Florida, and Oregon. So that means you're paying alimony forever, apparently. You know, those are states that still have permanent alimony. Crazy. You got to pay this woman what states are not 50-50 divorce? Uh, all states except Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin follow principles of equitable distrib distribution. But it's a give and take. It's a hodgepodge. You got to figure out where you are. That's why you want to talk to your lawyers before you get a marriage, before you get married. But what I wanted to kind of focus on again today was not so much the child support but I want to focus on before you get married. I want to focus on trust. You're going to get hit. All right. There's you're going to take some hits. But what I'm trying to do is help you guys eliminate the incentive of getting a divorce. I'm trying to help you guys figure out 
how to remove things that you would fight about, the property, the inheritance, uh, large sums of money. Now, there are things that come that happen during the marriage, like your income may go up, these sort of things. And you're going to have to try to prenup and postnup your way out of that. Now, in getting your woman to sign a postnup afterwards, right, you're going to have to give her something. You see, for instance, in order for uh, Melania Trump to agree to move to the White House after Donald Trump got elected, she demanded that he amend their prenuptial agreement. And so they created a new postnuptial agreement in which she agreed to move into the White House. So she she wanted something. OK, that's how it works. It's a constant negotiation. But what it does is it, 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 it eliminates the incentive for divorce or it eliminates the financial incentive. That's that's what we're trying to do. You can't if you get married to a woman. It's just like that. It's just like being in a business relationship. If 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 you merge with another company, you guys are going to come to become so integrally related. Your things are going to mesh and the judge is going to look at that and say, well, you know, you get this, you get that. Uh, you know, what do you guys want me to do about it? You, you the idiots that decide to get married. So she's going to get some stuff, especially if you're far wealthier than she is. She's going to get stuff. But the objective is for you as an older man, late 30s, 40s, you know, getting married, you get the benefit of having children with a young woman who's going to be, uh, you know, uh, able to, you know, listen and cooperate. That's the benefit you get. You're an idiot if you get married to some older woman who's not giving you any children. And remind you, and let me tell you again, the only reason you should be getting married is because you want kids, not because you want to, uh, you, you want company. Or you, don't do that. That's stupid. You get married because you want children, period. If you don't want to have children, don't get married. That's it. Well, that is really the only reason, the only reason, everything else you should be able to do competently without, you know, having such an uproar to your life. Get married because you want kids. If you want somebody to pay attention to you, hell, get a hooker, buy a dog, get a cat. Okay. If you want to have children, you want to have legitimate heirs, get married. That's how you do it. Any other reason is stupid. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Even if you remain with your partner, a trust is a great asset protection to lawsuits from your business or an auto accident could create huge financial strain. And if you aren't prepared, the best way to protect yourself is to make yourself the smallest financial target possible. Same thing with divorce. Trust takes away the ownership assets. And the less that you, you personally own, the less there is for a lawsuit to take from you. With the right kind of asset protection, trust, you can have access to the use of, use of the assets as needed within the protective guidelines. Therefore, trust can prevent a lot of financial problems, no matter what comes your way. OK, now, basically, it's just what I said. I quoted J.D. Rockefeller earlier. Own everything. I'm sorry. Own nothing. Control everything. You could have a trust set up to pay your bills, a trust set up to buy cars. Uh, a trust to hold your property, a trust to hold your inheritance. You don't just have to have one trust. You can have a trust set aside uh, to hold uh, income. You know, there's so many different ways you can do that. Again, this is for men who don't get married unless you're in your late 30s, early 40s. Don't do it. You want to already be set up and have pretty much, you know, your money set up. And you get married only because you want to have kids. People often associate prenuptial agreements uh, agreement to protect assets with cel celebrities and extremely wealthy. But they have many more uses. People of all ages in many different situations can benefit from a prenup. Uh, if you if you have a significant premarital estate, let's say, you, you know, you got inheritance, you won a lottery, whatever. It's a good idea to make sure that your spouse will only get as much as of it as you wish in the event of a divorce or a death. Because, see, she could take your money, she could take your, your property, and your kids won't get anything. This is especially true if you want to protect the inheritance of your children from a previous relationship. In other words, you got kids by a previous relationship, your ex, your new wife can take everything, and next thing you know, they fight over money and they get the money, and she done ran off with a new boyfriend, and your own children don't get anything. A prenup can also protect income and assets acquired during your marriage without setting terms 
at the beginning of the marriage, you may end up paying unexpected support or alimony to your spouse. You could say, look, I've been working at XYZ com company for 20 years. OK, part of the prenup is any money I earn from XYZ company is separate agreement is a, is a separate property, period. Any money that goes into my trust account, any money that goes into my 401k for retirement is separate property. You get that in a prenup. In exchange, you get this. You see what I mean? That way the judge can't say it's unconscious. You know? Uh, I can do that in the DR without marriage. No will it make a man stand up person. So, you know, you guys, you know, if, if what you what you put in a prenuptial agreement depending on what, what's important to you. The requirements by state vary on a prenup. So like these online prenuptial agreements written in New York or California, that might not apply in Alaska or uh, Montana. Uh, but many of them require that each party have their own attorney present. That's mandatory. You got to have your own attorney. To go. Doing this helps prevent a court from declaring a prenuptial agreement invalid. They can do that for many different reasons. Rest, um, unconscionable to enforce it. Any contract would be declared unconscionable. Uh, or it goes against the public interest. A prenuptial agreement is a binding contract, but you're able to amend it later in the form of a postnuptial agreement if your circumstances change. Um, let me see. So the question of which one is better, you know, prenup or postnup, I say use both of them. Again, you can have uh, two types of trust, irrevocable trust, revocable trust. An irrevocable trust is damn near impossible to pop open, right? You can't touch it. A revocable trust, you can pop open. Her divorce lawyer can pop open. One of your debtors you getting the cards in it, they can they can open it up. So you need you want to think irrevocable trust. You want to think uh, you, you 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 know in in most circumstances to hide substantial assets. You want to do that. You want your prenup to definitely regulate the income that comes in after the marriage, and you use that uh, with your uh, you know uh, in, in conjunction with post nuptial groups. That's how that works. Now. Um, you guys who want to come in here, you want to come in and talk to me? Uh, my man High Def is in here. What's up, High Def? You guys want to come in here and talk to me? Uh, no problem, but uh, join the conversation. I'm not here to, you know, you know, tell you not to get married. I'm not here to tell you to get married. I'm telling you if you want to get married, it's the way you do it, okay? My man Tyrone Washington, do prenups. Uh, typical stand up in court. It depends on what's in it. And that's why I say use this in conjunction with um, use this in conjunction with trust accounts. Use this in conjunction. You don't just use one or the other. Use both. Right. This is what I'm trying to tell you. And you also want to get a living will because let's say, for instance, you get sick. Right. And you're on a hospital bed. And your wife has power of attorney to determine whether they pull the plug on you or not. What if she been and she gets a, a windfall of money if she, you kick the bucket, right? So, yeah, they might have something they can save you with, but she's not going to opt for that. Why? She's not going to opt for it because, shit, she kick the bucket and get rid of your ass and get the money. So what you do is you put that power in somebody who, you know, who's not going to be uh, too terribly, uh, um, you know, who wants you to live, like your son or your daughter or something like that. You give them. That's what a living will does. You want to make sure you have that in place, too. You want to remember, you want to eliminate the financial incentive for divorce. And one of the one of one ways to get a divorce <laughs> or one way to terminate a marriage is through death. And if you happen to get in a car accident and they want to, you know, get rid of your butt and you on life support, they can do it. Uh, my man, Lorenzo Davis said, Mr. D, can a woman collect money if you in common law? or partner marriage, also including living with a woman for a long period of time. What you're referring to is common law marriage, and that depends on state to state. Uh, you know, they can always allege common law marriage and been holding yourself. Some general factors are, and I'm not giving you any legal advice, general factors are, uh, have you been holding yourself out of marriage, have you been signing documents saying you're married? There was a time, I believe Alabama, if you had sex with a woman, y'all was married. Isn't that something? So you got to be careful with that. Malika, what's up, brother? Is this helpful, man? Because I know the brothers don't want to hear none of this. They do not want to hear. Oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. This I is extremely married. helpful, man. They are you not. are a godsend to us men, man. Huh? <laughs> you are, man. You doing the Lord's work. 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm not being wanna... facetious about this. Yeah. I mean, this is this is something that um that we need to we need to know, but definitely young brothers need to know. Yeah. I like yeah. how you said um like we spoke about this, another brother spoke about this. Um, and I'm very clear about this. That's why some of the women in my family don't want me to talk to the younger brothers that are in my family. I automatically implicitly say between the ages of 18 to 30, you should not think about getting married. Mm -mm. Marriage should not be on the table. You should not even really be worried about having a serious, serious committed relationship with a woman. I don't care what women say. And I don't care how the way it is. It's because as a man, those windows of years are very important because you should be worrying about getting your career. You should be worried about stacking your money, but you should also worry about venturing out and learning how to navigate in this world. Because a lot of men, and especially in today's time with feminism and especially black men, how the way we were raised under this system, you don't know how to navigate through this world. You're automatically thinking like, okay, if I get a job or if I get out of school and I make some money, I automatically got to get with a woman. Yeah. And no, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. See, and, there's some things, there's some things I could tell people in a private conversation that I'm not going to say openly on YouTube. No. But if you guys are interested in having a private conversation with me about how you can this is like level three protection of assets. And then we can go to level two and level one protection of assets. There's some other stuff we can do having to do with offshore accounts, uh, bank accounts, offshore trust accounts, uh, corporations offshore that it won't matter if you're married or not. You, you see what I mean right now? I can talk to you about how you protect your assets, um, you know, but uh, I can't do that in this open public form like this. You see what I'm saying, uh, Malika? I hear you. But, I, but hear you. I hear you, brother. Yeah. I hear you. I'm laughing and smiling because I know you go to say but so much. But can I say something before you go yeah. to the next brother about the yeah, financial no thing? No problem. Man, I wish I knew you 10, maybe 20 years ago because when I went through my stuff and especially when I I wasn't a police officer anymore. And I went to, when I went to prison, mm -hmm. when you were talking about protecting your assets, not even just dealing with relationship, but just protecting your assets and having other ventures and venues to do that. But now yeah. as a 49 year old man, I'm seeing what the importance is, but I wasn't looking at it as a man who was in his mid to late thirties or even early thirties thinking of that. Because we're not taught about finances, we're, and also we're not taught about um, playing the long game, and we're not taught how uh -huh. to deal with um, delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. We want that instant gratification, and we think that our money, we, we think that money's always going to be there, and we think that, okay, I can do this when I get to a certain time, but then we realize those years go by, or when you get into a situation like I did, now you turn around, you have no money because you use all your money up. By doing foolish things or use all your money up dealing with the courts or trying to handle financial stuff before you go away to prison. And then when you get back out, you have to start back at square one. This yeah. is very important. I got to say this to the young brothers. If you have something, if you're in the military, if you are in a career, if you have anything, civil service job, I don't care if you're only making thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year. Listen to what Dennis is saying about getting into trust and investing your money. And also something very poignant. You said, if you're involved with a woman, you're getting involved with her, have separate accounts. Don't let her guilt you. Don't let her say we should do this. We should do that. If you say no, and she puts up a fight. Leave. Right. Leave. Right. Because, because she already let you know where she's coming from. And I'm making you I'm going to make you a moderator. Bro. Appreciate it. Man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Got your ranch. But yeah, you don't want to deal with a woman. If that, it's one thing for a woman to appreciate you making money and she knows she's going to be taken care of because you got money. It's another thing for her to already be thinking out about a divorce and how much of your money she can get out of the divorce it, 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 once she files that paperwork. You don't want a woman like that. That's why your first conversation should be, uh, how old are you? How many kids do you have? Do you have any diseases? And will you sign a prenuptial agreement? Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? 
that those that should be your first conversation because that's the elimination questions right there. How old are you? How many kids do you have? Do you have any diseases? And are you willing to sign a prenuptial agreement? Uh, Can I have you... one more in there? Go ahead. What outstanding debts do you have? Oh, that's another one too. You see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> hell yeah, especially those school loans. You know how I many of these like? But see, let me tell you, let me tell you guys something else. And look, if you guys appreciate what I'm saying, man, please, you know, contribute to the super chat, the cash app. I know one brother was asking me if I'm part of Patreon. I'm not part of Patreon, but uh, you can just join the. Uh, uh, you can contribute to the super chat. I kind of make everything public. But what I was saying was this, man. If you got a woman, she has uh, student loans. She has um, back taxes. She has credit card debt. They might end up making you pay that in a divorce. You see what I mean? Even if it's separate property, if you derive some benefit from her education, which um, uh was paid for by the loans that she took during the marriage, then the judge may very well say, well, yeah, well, she was a school teacher and during the marriage and she helped pay for the bills. And so you derive the benefit from that, that her, her job as a school teacher. So now you're responsible for paying me part of this debt. It could be 10%, 20, it could be 50% of the debt. You see what I'm saying? So now you take that debt with, with you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, so that's why you got to be careful who you're dealing with. You know, you, my lady, one of the first things she told me, I don't have any debt. I got all scholarships to go to my Ivy League uh, university, which is one of the reasons why, you know, she answered all the questions uh, in an acceptable manner for me. You see what I'm saying? I don't want, I'm not against marriage, fellas. I'm against you getting robbed in divorce court. Right. And see, nobody is telling you that. Just like they don't teach you civics, they don't teach you politics. They don't teach you how to protect yourself or really eliminate the things that you would fight about during the divorce. You're going to fight about the house. You're going to fight about the cars. You're going to fight about the contents. You, 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 this is what's going to happen. You can get a corporation, put the house in that name, the corporation in your name. You, you can get a prenuptial agreement to, to eliminate, to, to separate your income that's derived from your different jobs and your work efforts. You can have that de be deemed separate property and that be ongoing and you can renew that contract every couple of years and any money that you derive from that is separate now the cars all that stuff that's what the prenups are for the uh, yeah it might get challenged but the bottom line is you know it's gonna be challenged if you don't have a prenup you see what i'm saying but uh anyway uh thanks malika ballers uh are traveling what's up man how you doing man what are your thoughts on this and anybody you want to get in man contribute to the super chat great info thanks for suggestion uh, Mr. Melly, thank you for that. Ballers travel, man. What's your thoughts, man? Yeah, just going out to the brother who previously spoke. Um, I mean, yeah, we wish we had YouTube. It's not even your fault, bro. You know, um, if we had YouTube, we had Dennis and, you know, all these other content creators, we could have probably made some different decisions. But um, just, you know, we can't go back in time. We can just move forward, you know? Yeah, I'm, and I'm not I'm not against getting married. I don't want anybody. I'm not against getting married. I'm just against you brothers working your whole life and getting robbed in, 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 in court. That's what I'm against. Okay, I don't want that to happen. Now, not a whole lot can do about the child support system unless you live in a state where, you know, it's a little less, uh, it's, not, it's not California. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you, you, can, you can work with it, but you know, there's some states like Texas that have a cap on child support, which is great. You know, and it's crazy. It's crazy that you got so many black men who are now going over to that more social or conservative Republican, whatever you want to call it, because those are the states that allow you to live after a divorce. You see what I mean? Texas, they, they got something called the golden the golden baby rule. They really wanted to call it the gold digger rule because they put a cap on how much money a woman can get for child support. You know, they it's it's. Uh, Chris Brown, all these rappers and football players who have kids in the state of Texas. You can't, you can't, uh, all you get is $2,500. They make $90 million a year. All she can get is $2,500 a month for child support. You see what I'm saying? And they're irrespective of where the custody agreement lies. So, so let's say, for instance, you, you got your child support payment is in one state, determined by one state, and your custody agreement is paid for by another state. Typically, where you live, that governs you and your money, right? 
So you live in Texas, but your old lady lives in New York. How much you have to pay is governed by, you know, the state of Texas if you go ahead and file first. A, a judge may maintain the, the, the uh, jurisdiction over the custody of the child. You guys see what I'm saying? You see how that's separated? You know how some people, they pay child support, but they don't see their kid and they don't understand why? Because those are two separate agreements. Child support and the custody agreement are two separate things. You understand what I'm saying? Ball is a trap. Yeah, I understand. I'm listening, Dennis. But let's say hypothetically, your old lady hints that she wants to get a divorce and you live in Florida. And you say, well, F that, man. I'm moving back home to Austin, Texas. And then, uh, you know, she files for a divorce or you file for a divorce. Yeah, that state that you just came from might govern uh, the actual custody agreement. How often you see your child, blah, 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 blah. But the state that you live in determines how much money you have to pay. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. all, you need, all you need is six months to establish residence. You see how that works? You see there's a lot of play in that system. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. All you guys, man, y'all really contributing today. I guess you guys like this topic, right? If you like this topic, put a W in the, in the, in the chat room. If you like this topic, you want me to talk more about stuff like that, put a W in the chat room. Because this is practical. You know what I'm saying, Mel? You're not going to be born on this earth and spend 80 years by yourself on this earth and not have any children. That that just that's probably not going to happen. So why not give instructions to these men on how they can better do what they want to do anyway? You understand what I'm saying, Mel? Of course, of course. Yeah, it, it's not realistic. Like I, I have great respect for the, for the men going their own way and the philosophy of MGTOW, and it makes sense. But in the end of the day, are you really? Do you really want to spend 80 years on this planet and not leave any legacy? No children. You don't get the opportunity to be somebody's father, somebody's grandfather. You don't get a chance to watch your kids grow up. You don't get a chance to, you know, uh, teach your son or daughter how to ride a bike. You don't get any of that, don't you? And at, at a certain point, man, when you get a certain age, man, nobody's going to be bothered with you. You see what I'm saying? Like, okay, you worked the job. You got your pension. For what? You see what I mean? And, and exactly. who's going to You don't, you want to have... A legacy. Any man, I would think, any man wants to have a legacy. You want to see yourself go forward into the future. I think it's just a selfish human need. So I'm not going to ever tell you brothers not to have children. I'm not going to ever tell you not to have a wife because there's some benefits to having company, man. You got a good wife, man. They got your back, man. Your ass is sick, laid up in the bed. And, you know, she's making you breakfast and she's beautiful and inspirational. That's a good thing. I want you brothers to have that. I just don't want you to get robbed in family court. That's why I want to remove the financial incentive out of divorce. I want you to stay married. I want her to stay married. The reason a lot of those divorces didn't fail back in the day, Mel, is because those women, if they walked away from the marriage, they was getting nada. They wasn't going to even get the kids. You see what I'm saying? The kids went with the husband. There wasn't no child support popping off. So that's why they ass stayed in that marriage. You understand what I'm saying, Mel? Exactly. No fault. Now, no fault. No at fault marriage. Yeah, I might have said it wrong, but you can correct me on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and see the thing is, my man, like it's fun. Like I did the see the, the reason. Like I can speak from this position is because I did all the tricking and partying and hanging out in the Dominican Republic and Colombia, and and it plays out after a while. Man, who wants to do that every day? Man, you got three or four different women. <laughs> coming in the house every day. You got all these different women and attitudes. I was telling my girl last night, I'm like, I don't want a whole bunch of women around me all the goddamn time. It's annoying. Can you imagine having all these, you got three or four text messages every morning, good morning, how you doing? You got to respond to all that. You know what I'm saying? You got to deal with all these different personalities, all these different women. It's just a pain in the ass. It's good to have one good, solid female on your side. You understand what I'm saying, fellas? Yeah. And, and, and it's nothing wrong with that. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. It's nothing wrong with that. But what you want to do, again, is eliminate the financial incentive in getting a divorce. Because right now, it's a financial incentive in getting a divorce. It's a financial incentive in having children out of wedlock. You want to try to eliminate that. You understand what I'm saying, man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But yeah. anyway, what's your thoughts on this thing, man? Yeah, well, you know, one of the big main factors, I learned this from a lawyer, too. And I know a lot of celebrities make mistake doing this. That when they do get a prenup, that they don't pay the 
keep it maintained. Mm -hmm. Because each, each year, and depending where you move or your circumstances deep in the marriage, that 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 prenup can change out the fault. And, the, and a, lot of these, a lot of people don't pay the extra money to maintain it, you know, for certain changes that might come during this amount of years y'all been together. Look, let me let me give them a, let me give them a, let me give them a hint, right? Okay, so what Mel is talking about, you got a prenuptial agreement. Uh, it says that hey, I make eighty thousand dollars. I've been doing this job for years. I make eighty thousand dollars a year, and then five years later, you you making one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year because you didn't get a prenuptial agreement and establish that. All that money over and above eighty thousand dollars is also separate property, right? That you didn't get that postnuptial agreement after you got married. Now it's like, well, what about this? Let's we gonna fight about this. All I'm trying to do is eliminate the incentive the to to get a divorce, and I'm eliminating the the things that you fight about during a divorce: alimony, child support, community property. Uh, uh, so you, you you see what I'm saying? You eliminate these things, inheritance, money, all these different things. That's locked away in the trust, baby. You can't get that. Oh, oh, oh that's my inheritance, money. you can't get that. Oh, this is pre -nup. We talked about this in the prenup. That's done. This is already money I was making that time. This this car, that how, that's all in the trust. This right here, that belongs to this this uh, corporation over here. Oh, but you own the corporation. Oh, well. Oh, that money! I don't know what happened to that money. That money disappeared. Next, you don't know. It's somewhere in the, in, the, in an offshore trust account, somewhere outside the subpoena power of the court. You see what I mean? This is this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Like, do everything because the system is fed, set up to be unfair towards the man, the one who's making the majority of the money, or whoever, whether it's the man or the woman. You have to th do things ahead of time to protect yourself, just like any corporation would do. If you're a businessman. Mel, if you're in a business, you want to go into business with a guy and he's he's got a bit and you know how, what the corporate business laws are. And you know, there are so many variables involved in it and you anticipate, well, damn, we got a 50. We're going to merge, but there's a 50 percent chance that this company is going to be broken up. You want to anticipate that. That's a good business man, right? Exactly. You just took it to that at the own. Well, I was about to say what the next thing I'm about to say on my head. Like, like yeah. marriage is a business and stuff like that. You ever yeah. notice that some guys they be married multiple times and they don't mm -hmm. mind it because you know why? Because they, don't mind. Lost, they feel like they have they can gain double off that. They know how to come in with gains, but also losses. But also when yeah. they get out, they know how much they're willing to lose and everything so they can gain more and retire right. it again. And, and, and look, don't marriage. Yeah, don't get married unless you want to have children. If you just get married because you want company, that's stupid. If you get married because you're in love, that's stupid. Exactly. Don't go in there with your heart. Your heart and your wallet are in two different places. Your heart is over here. Your wallet is by your ass. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> don't let those mix. <laughs> you, you make decisions with your heart in other places. You, you Your ass is going to have to pay if you make decisions uh, that affect your wallet with your heart. I'm trusting. I'm, uh, I'm telling you, fellas, so you, you don't go into marriage. If you just want to be in love, get a girlfriend, you, you know, get a cat, get a dog. I don't know. You just want some, you want some constant, uh, 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 BJ, go take some, some, some dude trips <laughs> down to Columbia and DR. That's all I'm saying. Separate yourself from your emotions. Don't be emotional with your decision. You only want to get married because you want to have children. If you don't want to have children, don't get married, fellas. Period. Exactly. That's it. Because what we don't want to do is have a bunch of loose kids around it. Because see, here's what happens. You, you don't get married, but you have children. Now you got this one, that one, that one, that one. You got no control of them. They got your last name. Maybe they don't have your last name. They grow up and mad at you. You see what I mean? That just creates hell for you. You see what I'm saying? At least you tried to do the right thing. And nine times out of ten, man, if you can eliminate the financial incentive of getting a divorce, she's going to stay with you. Because she don't want those problems. She don't want to go back to pop. You understand what I'm saying, Mel? Exactly. All right, cool. Hey, you guys, if you appreciate what I'm doing, man, make sure you contribute to the Super Chat and the Cash App. The links for the Cash App up here. And then also, let me put the Super Chat in here, too. I mean, not the Super Chat. Let me put the PayPal in there, too. Please contribute if you appreciate what I'm doing here. Uh, Malika, man, what are your thoughts on this thing, man? What what other... We talked about prenups. We talked a little bit about postnups. I told guys where they can get that info. We talked about trust, a little bit about revocable trust, irrevocable trust, offshore trust, um, you know, out being outside the jurisdiction of the court 
kind of hit on everything. This is not deemed to be legal advice. I'm just throwing some names and terminology out there. So when you talk to uh, an estate planner, when you talk to your divorce lawyer or even a lawyer that does family law before you get married, which you should do, spend that five, spend that two hundred to five hundred dollars and have that consultation. You see what I'm saying, Malika? Have that consultation. Uh, what else? What else do you think I should hit on, man? Before we uh, uh, this is something funny. Yeah, not funny, haha, but funny, realistic, especially in today's time. Mm -hmm. If you are serious about this woman, and if you even if you're really, really serious in a serious relationship that goes past, I should say, 12 months, a year, mm -hmm. do a background check on her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And okay. a lot of the, and, and this is a funny thing, because women do it on us. But guys, we don't do it on women because we think all oh, that's messed up. No. If this woman you're serious with, do a background check on her. That's because they put women up on a pedestal, man. They exactly. They, they, they associate her being beautiful and attractive with her being good. And who says that? Tigers are beautiful, but they eat you alive. You see exactly. what I'm saying? So you, you can't do that, fellas. You can't be suckers. You can't go into marriage as a sucker. You know what I mean? All you guys, you, you've been on the internet, you red pill, good. That What that should mean fundamentally is you treat women like they're the human beings that they are. They're human beings and they're subject to do the same things that other human beings do. And that is what is in their own best interest for survival. Right. One of the best things that I had access to was the database as a police officer. Mm -hmm. Are you and out there running backgrounds on people? Yes, sir. Sure. Legal, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And that was the thing. I left. I simply did some dumb stuff, but I left quite a few women alone because one of my boys said, what happened with the old girl? I said, man, they did a background check on you. He said, what do you mean? I said, first of all, she... She was married twice. She did a stint in jail for something dealing with check fraud and an assault. And I was just like, nah, I don't need that. And I said, it was cool. And I guess what you would call it back then was ghosting her. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't answer her they, call. They call it ghosting now, man. Yeah. yeah. I didn't do that. But that's one thing men should do. Pay, yeah. I mean, for, pay, to, pay to get a background check on a woman. I, I think it's like twenty dollars now, man. You get a background check, but but uh, twenty. What's twenty dollars? That's that's yeah. that's that's but, just a little bit of money in your gas tank. But even still, man, it, let's say you got a, you shady and she shady, and y'all want to get married. Cool, be shady together. Y'all have a little shady little couple group going on. Y'all smoking weed and, and 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 doing whatever you do together. You see what I mean? But the bottom line is, I'm trying to help you protect. I'm telling you to separate yourself from your emotions. Don't equate her beauty with her goodness. Anticipate that she is a woman is a human being and will do whatever is in her own best interest when the divorce mm -hmm. happens. See, once the divorce gets filed, you guys are enemies. You guys are adversaries. Expect her to do all the shady stuff that she can do. Expect her lawyer is going to tell her to fight over everything. If you got 10 things to fight over, they're going to fight over 10 things. But if you eliminate those things, those 10 things, you get like two things to fight over. It ain't really a whole lot more a lawyer can do. But like, ma'am, this is in trust. You preen up this away. You posting up that away. It's only this and this we can fight about, period. There's not, nothing else to fight about. You eliminate the, the, the you, you eliminate the reasons to prolong this divorce and make it more expensive. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and here's the thing. When she goes and gets that consultation, she's going to say, well, hold on a minute. Even if I do win these two things, I'm going to be broke. This is, you mean I'm not going to get the house. I'm not going to get the cars. I'm not going to get his retirement. I'm not gonna get alimony. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna be the one that have to watch these kids, and then my 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 uh, child support is gonna be limited. Oh hell no! I, I, I'm good. I'm gonna stay where I'm at. That'll make her want to reconcile and recommend. Let's go down to um, the family. Can I mention a couple? Let's go of down. Things. Let's go down to, the, to, to marriage counseling. That's gonna okay. make her want to stay in a relationship. You are eliminating the incentive to get divorced. That's what I want to do with prenups trust accounts, post-nups, offshore trust accounts, and, and whatnot. That's what I'm trying to get you guys to do. You still may get a divorce, but you're going to limit it. And, and then if you do get a divorce, what's going to happen is she, you know, she's going to look around and say, well, damn, it ain't, it, he's back up and rolling and I'm over here struggling. You see what I'm saying? And now to teach her a lesson and the rest of them will realize, well, damn, maybe this whole divorce thing, this thing is played out. We can't do this anymore. 
But go ahead, Malika. And everybody, look, we got 145 people in the chat room. We got 128 likes. Get the likes up. Please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and get the likes up now, you guys. We've got 128. We've got 145 people. Okay, we're up to 129. Keep hitting the like button. Come on, y'all. Let's get to 130. Let's get to, okay, we got 130. Let's get to 145. Make sure you should share this. Make sure you tag your friends on this, Facebook, YouTube. They might need to hear this. You got some homeboys right now that's thinking about getting married. Hopefully they hear this conversation. Hopefully they pump the brakes and say, baby, I love you, but we still got to, if you really love me and you want to stay married to me forever, then let's go ahead and eliminate the incentive to get a divorce right now. Let's eliminate the financial incentive for getting a divorce. If we do that right now, baby, I'll probably, we'll, we'll, it's more likely that we'll stay married a long time. And if you really love me, like you say you do, then you'll 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 come along with me on that. That's go ahead and do that jujitsu on it. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Malika, what you got? Uh, do not own any property. Do not co-sign any loans. Do not co-sign any contracts. Do not even going into any investments with it with a woman if she's not your wife and you know oh, like yeah. how you say yeah, yeah. I, you know that's just stupid i'm, I'm not even we ain't even talking about it. hopefully nobody no hold on brother can, can i say this though cars can out I say this? your name the paper hopefully you're not doing that but go ahead but there but can i say something we need to put this on the table because there are brothers that have done that no i refuse to believe that the brothers are that silly they would they would put a car, a house, or apartment in some woman's name that they're not married to. I don't believe that. But like I refuse to believe <laughs> that brothers are doing that. I, uh, uh, no, no. There's there's dumb, and then there's dumb. I you I refuse. Look at me. Look at me. I refuse to believe you brothers out there putting cars in your name and giving them to these women, or, or co-signing for these women, or co-signing for apartments for your credit. I don't believe that. I, why would you come on here? And make up this foolishness like this. Can life. I tell you I, something? I dare you. Exposing the simps, man. <laughs> I dare you say that, my life. But go ahead. Do not become godfathers to any woman's kids. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Don't don't write any contracts that you the godfather oh, because no. oh. if y'all split up and she's asking for money or something like that, and your name is the there. Yeah, we talked. That was another conversation we had. We mixing stuff up, man. We just talked about divorces today. Bro. But I'm just saying, to be, be careful. Yeah, yeah we, we got to stick on this stuff. There's, there's so much that we can talk about. But right now, I'm talking to brothers who want to have children. You you listen to Kevin Samuels. You know, you, you're learning how to vet the women, right? You listen to people like me. I'm teaching you how to protect your assets once you get to the point where you want to have a, 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 a lovely lady in your life. You see what I'm saying? And this applies to all of them. I don't care how pretty she is. If she's from Columbia, don't speak English. She's going to find a bilingual lawyer. Okay? And that bilingual lawyer is going to tell her to hit, hit you in the pocket. She, he's going to say, she, you've been to, she was taken advantage of. My client didn't speak English. She came to this country under the rest. There was war going on, extreme poverty, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> right, agreement is just signed under the rest. It's, you know, it's unconscionable. Blah 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 blah. That's fine, judge, because the trust in the house, the cars in the house, and the trust. What else we gonna find? You want the sofa? Go ahead, you can have it. So, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Eliminate, it. eliminate the financial incentive out of divorce, and that'll eliminate some of the reasons for getting a divorce. Uh, my man D Max said, "My dumb ass co-signed the vehicle, and it screwed me." That's how I discovered the red pill. Man, bro, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't do it. But anyway, ballers are traveling. What else you got to add to this this hot topic? Yeah, this, this um this might date my age here, yeah, but I remember a movie that came out. It was called Water Roses. Ah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> ended up messing around. Boy, that, boy, she ended up messing around with the lawyer. Boy. You know? Boy, yeah. If you're gonna, if before, if you don't think you want a prenup or whatever, watch that movie. That'll that'll convince you of everything. That'll set you straight, like scared straight. <laughs> yeah. Remember they used to, they had that program to put kids in, take them to the jail, so you know they wouldn't want to become criminals. That's mm -hmm. like the um. That's for men who you know are interested. You know, if you're not interested in protecting your assets, watch I mean, that movie. His, his main problem is he got married too young. They were about the same age. That's what I'm saying. You get married after you build yourself up. You separate your property. You put your property in trust. And you say, here you go, baby. Now, 
80, 90 percent of what I own is locked away over here. You want to fight about this 10, 20 percent, get your lawyers, get your lawyers. You're going to lose access to all of this to get this little piece of money right here. Go ahead. And I'm going to replace how you replace before the end of the year. You see what I'm saying? She's going to be yeah. looking at that like, damn, this this divorce is not going to pan out right. You know what I mean? And she's going to have that in the back of her mind. So she's going to be more apt to listen to you. She's going to be more apt to, like, let me be cool. Let me not get out of line because if he leaves me, I, I don't get nothing. You, know, you see what I'm saying? So let me be cool. You see what I mean? That You eliminate the incentive in getting a divorce. Because sometimes, man, when people want to do something, they want to pick a fight with you, they will. They'll pick the fight with you so they can have a reason to get a divorce. This relationship is not working. But what, what was we arguing about? You see what I'm saying? It's going to make them try harder when they know that it benefits them to stay in the marriage. They not have, they don't have to try anymore if there's no benefit in staying in the marriage. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Y'all get where I'm coming from? A little, little human psychology in here, man. I want people to get married and stay married. I want y'all to do that. I want to see children and their mom and their dad. And I like that, man. You go to the park, you see people with, you know, nice relationships. That's a beautiful thing. I like that. You know what I mean? I don't want you guys to be alone. That's, that's, that's not healthy. You know, human beings are social creatures. Ideally, you want a good, solid woman. You just don't. You just want to weed out the ones with the incentives, the 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 the, the ulterior motives. And you also want to make sure that she gets a notion in her mind, right? That that I'm going to. Uh, 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 she gets a notion in her mind that I'm gonna get a divorce. It quick quickly is washed away when she realized she's gonna go. She's gonna be broke. She's gonna go back to that little the duplex she was living in when y'all met. You understand what I'm saying? Oh man, Mr. Albert said friends with benefits is the best route. I don't know, bro. I don't know if that's the best route. You see what I'm saying? Because friends with benefits, what if y'all have a kid? What if y'all don't have a kid? Now you've been wasted 10, 15 years of your life. You've been with this woman for 15 years. You have no children. You see what I mean? You have no legacy. You done wasted her time. She wasted your time. All you got is, you know, emotional baggage associated with that. I don't know about that, man. Um, but uh Daryl. Daryl M. 007 said the USA probably will become more leftist, redo marriage contact to continue robbing men, the intent to rob men and destroy family remains. Yeah, that's why you want to have these offshore accounts so your money is outside the jurisdiction of these American courts. Mel, what's up, bro? Talk to me. Uh oh, Hello? we lost him. Yeah, Mel, hey, man. What do you got to say to the people, man? Man, there's like me so tell them, man, yo. I always talk to dudes, man, like, you know what? Don't be naive when you get into certain things, man, especially marriage. Be very wary of a lot of people that down talk it, man, you know what I'm saying? But also, be 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 smart about it, man. Number one, yeah. marriage is a business. It's a business. Treat it like a business. Exactly. Treat, treat, matter of fact, treat it like the dope game for all you brothers out there. It's shady out there, man. Protect yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. But if you guys appreciate what I'm doing, you appreciate this message. You want me to do more of this? Y'all go ahead and contribute to the super chat and the cash app, and I will. If these are the type of messages you guys want to hear, cool. But what we did today is we briefly talked about trust accounts and prenuptial accounts. None of the information that I gave you today should be considered legal advice. I'm just simply pointing out some tools you can use, some financial tools, some things that are already in place to protect your financial assets and eliminate the incentive to get a divorce and eliminate the incentive to separate people and cause children to have to be part of broken homes. That's what I'm doing. This is more like a public service announcement. I want to see you brothers get married. I want to see you in stable, happy relationships. I want that for you. I want you to find good women. And this helps you learn how to sort who's good for you and who's not good for you out because you'll learn who wants your money and, and who's in it for, for the long run. And that's what I'm here for. Uh, I appreciate everybody, man. Uh, you know, uh, I appreciate everything people are doing. If you guys want to do a one on one, I see a lot of guys in here. They want to ask these questions. If you want to have a private consultation with me, like Arms Mageddon said, what's the minimum amount of money you can have in an offshore account? You need to send me an email and schedule a private consultation. I'm more than happy to uh, consult with you guys. And if you want information like that. I can hook you up with the lawyers and people and give you the terminology and the know-how to protect yourself. But, you know, that's a private consultation that we need to have. Guys. But uh, there's not some things I'm just not going to say publicly like that. You know, I got, you know, I went to years of, of school and experience to learn these things. 
And uh, it's important that you guys show your appreciation, not just for, for me giving this information up in the broadcast, but if you really want that detailed information, you have got to, uh, and you want those connections, you're going to have to, you know, send an email to me at SperlingDennis at gmail.com, schedule a private consultation. And we can have a conversation about this. We can go through so many different scenarios. But as it is right now, man, this is Uncle D. I appreciate everybody for the contributions, everybody who contributed to the Super Chat and the Cash App. And, uh, you know, uh, nothing we can do. We can't, we can deal, we just deal with the circumstances that's at hand. All right, that's what we're doing here. Um, my man Rich Cliff said, what if a woman laughs at you uh, when you bring up prenup and refuses to sign it because she doesn't think you're rich enough for that? Just leave her and go find another woman. There's plenty of them out there. And, and then you can be laughing at her while you're sitting on the beach with some fine women and enjoy that until the right woman comes along. You know, but other than that, man, yeah, you don't deal with women like that. And she's already letting you know what, what, what it's in. And it's not just about the money you have right now. It's about the, your earning potential and the money you earn in, in, in the future. That's what your post-nups, your prenups and your post-nups, nuptial agreements are there to do ideally. But uh, either way, man, this is Uncle D, man. I'm out. Mm -hmm.